Hey everybody, I'm back with another update of what's happening here in Southern Utah. And today I'm at Intermountain Cancer Center where I'm gonna be interviewing Gary Stone. He's leading the charge with it, Precision Genomics, which is a technology that's really helping uh, be able to detect disease and cancer really early on. It's world changing stuff, super excited that it's here in Southern Utah. Uh, can't wait to show you what they're doing. So let's get started. So I'm here with Gary Stone, who is the Associate Vice President of Precision Health and Academics here at Intermountain Healthcare. Uh, he's going to tell us more about what this Precision Genomics is, their story, and, and why they're here in Southern Utah. So first of all, thanks for having us. Thank Appreciate you for it. coming over. Um, so to start out, Precision Genomics, what is it? So Precision Genomics is a, a comprehensive way to think differently about how we treat patients. So when you think about medicine um, and the way that we've treated patients over the decades, we've made improvements in the way that we treat patients. We've, we've developed new technologies. Oftentimes those two new technologies are kind of interventional, right? So they're surgical procedures that we've advanced um, and other invasive procedures, but the underlying medical science hasn't really changed uh, until the 21st century, and that's when the human genome was completed. And we had a lot of different ideas about what the human genome would be, um, and as we were getting ready to sequence it as scientists, it, uh, the, the results were, were, were more complicated, I think, than we had realized. But what was key from, those, uh, from that study is understanding that a, that a large portion of uh, genetic, or a large portion of diseases are due to our genome. Okay. And that really has transformed the underlying medical science behind um, medicine as we know it, right? And I think that's really hard for people to get their minds around. So one of the ways that I talk about it is a computer. Um, so if you think about a computer or an iPad or whatever you're yeah. using, the, the iPad or the computer is your hardware, like your body, right? Okay. What makes that hardware work? It's software. And all software is, is a, a code of ones and zeros. Um, and the ones and zeros create an electrical message to tell the iPad how to function, right? right. Yeah. Very, very simple. Yeah. If you have ones and zeros put together in a code and, one, and a one and zero is switched for some reason, you're going to have a glitch yeah. in your software, it right? It won't work. won't work. So I look at the genome in that same exact way. Our body is our iPad. What makes our iPad function? It's actually the genome. Yeah. But in, and, and in every single cell, we have uh, all of our DNA um, that comprises this genome that we're talking about. And that DNA is similar to the ones and zeros program. The DNA is built um, with letters A, G, T, C, and the arrangement of those letters, just like the ones and zeros, are what create a code inside a cell. And then that code, instead of sending an electrical signal like you'd see in your iPad, it sends a chemical signal. And that chemical signal will tell the cells to grow and divide, or it will tell the cells to die off. So, for example, in your colon, this is probably a little personal, but in your colon, <laughs> Uh, the colon relines itself with new cells every three days. It is not your brain that is telling your colon to reline itself. Yeah. It's not you, right? Like you're not saying, okay, it's time to reline the colon. Right, yeah, yeah. What, what's happening is the cells inside the colon have this computer code in your DNA that tells the cells to die off, the old ones to die off, and the new ones to grow. Got it. So what happens, just like in a computer program, if an AGTC combination is switched or amplified or, or mutated in some way. Well, if, if the code that tells the cells to die off before a new lining comes on board is, if that code is not working, then the cells wouldn't die off, the old cells. But the new lining would come on and more new lining, right. the old cells don't die. Got it. What do you think that yeah. would? What, what does that turn into, do you guess? Yeah, not, not pretty. It's, can <laughs> it's cancer. That's what cancer is, right? It's um, a, an yeah, abnormal growth, but that is due to the combination of, of these letters of A, G, T, and C that get, that get um, mutated, and then that results in a, um, a, a, an overgrowth or, or whatever um, 
tumor it is. And that's true for brain cancer, it's true for all cancers. So cancer is actually a disease related directly to our genome. Got it. So what we do here <clears throat> in Precision Genomics is we have the technology and the scientists to understand and discover where those mutations occur in a, in a tumor. And then we help the patient's immune system um, uh, work toward eliminating that mutation. So that's, that signal that's not working correctly, we correct it, um, either through an immune system response, through medication, or through, through other means. And very early on, right, from my understanding, yeah. you, you can detect those types of cancers and diseases from a very young yeah. age, even to birth, right? Now that's, that is so important that you bring that up in terms of birth and, and when we are first come into life. Like, um, we can detect if genetically you have inherited a potential mutation. So these mutations that I'm talking about, sometimes those mutations are just because we are on the planet Earth and we're, we're exposed to yeah. the, the world. Sometimes those mutations, we don't understand what causes them to create a cancer. Um, sometimes the mutations are caused from smoking. So, an, so a, you know, a, an agent that's toxic to yeah. us or the sun, if, it's too, if we keep getting exposure without sunscreen. But um, sometimes it's because we've inherited a, genetic, a, a gene from our parents that puts us at risk for a mutation. And when we know that early, when we know that early, then we can take steps to prevent you yeah. from from getting that from type getting of cancer that mutation. Mm -hmm. So interesting. And so this is like world changing, right? I yeah. Mean, the fact that it's here in St. George, Utah, stationed yeah. here out of anywhere else in the world, so is so pretty incredible. Yeah. So Fast Company um, uh, just awarded us in 2020. Um, the, uh, we were on the world's changing ideas for innovation for Fast Company. Wow. Um, and that's a big deal because you will see uh, companies like Apple and Google and you know, really yeah. large national brands or international brands on that, on that list. innovation list. Wow. Here's why we ended up on that list, why we ended up with that award. World changing ideas is what the award is. It's because we, as you said, um, we, we can detect uh, early on uh, potential for cancer, right, from, from, uh, from your inheritance. But there are so many more things we need to learn about the genome. Um, so when we think about the genome, it, it, the, I've only scratched the surface when I talk about um, cancer. When you really look into what the genome's responsible for and you think to yourself, okay, if my body's like the iPad and my genome is like software, then it must be doing lots of things, not just growing cells in my colon, and it is. It helps you metabolize medication, or it determines how you're gonna metabolize medication, and a whole range of things. So, um, for example, we now do something called pharmacogenomics, and pharmacogenomics is looking at your genes to determine how you're going to metabolize a drug. So a lot of people, especially in Utah, struggle with mental health depression, anxiety, yep. and oftentimes they need medications that really can be life-changing and, and, and truly help them to, to live a, a normal life and healthy life. They don't always need medications, but when you need medications, it's so important that they are working correctly. Right. But because people are a little bit um, worried about taking antidepressants or anti-anxieties, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, myth about those drugs. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, uh, misconceptions and fear. So if and then what happens is when someone's taking an antidepressant for the first time, they oftentimes will not have a good response. Um, and the doctor will say, "Give it two or three weeks. It's kind of trial and error." And when a patient has a bad experience with an antidepressant, it confirms all their fears about antidepressants, Got right? It. So what, the reason that's happening, the reason there's this trial and error effort is because our genomes differ. Your genome is different than mine by a slight difference. Mm -hmm. Your genome may metabolize an antidepressant differently than mine. Got it. So your antidepressant dose and the drug for you should be based on your based genome. On and mine should be based on my genome. Got it. When you do that, you have remarkably better response immediately or, or much quicker. You're not going through a trial and error period. 
and that has worked wonders for patients who struggle with mental health. We also do uh, genomics now in our newborn intensive care units. Sometimes a baby is born prematurely and remains in the ICU, uh, and we don't know why they're not progressing. Uh, there, the, there's a, a, an odyssey happening. We call it a diagnostic odyssey. So we keep doing di uh, diagnostic procedures, trying to poke and prod a baby that we shouldn't be poking and prodding um, to try to understand why they're not progressing and why we can't get them home. Well, come to find out, <clears throat> genomics is a way to determine what's wrong with those babies and to actually diagnose them. And through a whole genome of that newborn, we can determine what's causing the problem and more rapidly treat them and get them out of the ICU, which is better for the families, obviously better for that little baby, but it's also better for healthcare costs because we're not languishing in an ICU for yeah. 30 to 60 to 90 days. Right. So I tell you that whole story because it leads to heretogene. Yeah. And heretogene is so, so I, I've, I've outlined cancer, mental health, newborn intensive care as these examples of yeah. where genomic medicine is, is truly life-changing, world-changing. But there's so much more to learn about the genome. We, we know very, very little. Um, there are many other diseases that we want to conquer. Chronic diseases that really are debilitating for society. Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, autism. So. The way to really understand more of the genome, we have to gather a large data set. And with that data set, we can use data science and artificial intelligence uh, to mine the data and, and really determine what genes might be, or mutations might be determinative in something like multiple sclerosis or vertigo, for example, which will then lead to further treatments and, I believe, further eradicating these chronic diseases um, that are really debilitating that we haven't conquered yet, uh, like cancer, like multiple sclerosis, like Alzheimer's. Got it. Very cool. Sounds like you guys are doing amazing things. Yeah. So lastly, real quick, uh, why here in Southern Utah of all places? So I've got to figure out how to make that brief because it, it's, <laughs> a, it's a long story, but <clears throat> years ago, 10 or more years ago, um, we, I, I had accountability um, as a hospital uh, administrator to stabilize cancer treatment in St. George. Most people were having to leave um, St. George in Southern Utah to Huntsman to, or to Salt Lake City um, right. for, for treatment or to Vegas or wherever. And so I took the charge to bring a cancer program and really stable a cancer program in, in St. George. <clears throat> And one of the ways that I did that was with um, employing or hiring medical oncologists. Medical oncologists are the oncologists that give patients chemotherapy. They're the ones that are treating um, patients medically. Uh, so they're not doing surgeries or, or doing radiation. They're, they're treating kind of this at a scientific and medical level um, for the, the patient's physiology with cancer. The medical oncologists, um, at the time, we're, we're leaving St. George, or we didn't have them here. So I, I worked with Intermountain Healthcare to create an employment model where we could employ medical oncologists, and by employing them, we could align their payment and the way we pay them with incentives that help patients and drive innovation. Got it. Because the previous payment model did not drive innovation. It, it kind of can, can maintain status quo of chemotherapy. So we created that, that payment model and we were the only place in Utah that had that kind of a compensation model for a medical oncologist. Dr. Yeah. Derek Haslam was our first. He, he was the first person to be employed in this model and honestly, Dr. Haslam took that vision and he um, really spread it throughout the state of Utah. So we stabilized oncology. He, Dr. Haslam and I together, he, uh, hired other medical oncologists and he came to me and I won't forget this, we were actually in Cedar City because we set up a cancer program in Cedar City as well. And he pulled me aside or we were driving home and he said, Gary, do you, do you want to just be status quo and have stable cancer treatment or do you want to change the world? <laughs> And I have a personality where I want to change the world. That's awesome. And uh, he said that I want to meet. I want you to, to introduce you to Dr. Lincoln Adolph. 
So Dr. Nadold at the time was finishing his postdoctoral work at Stanford University. He is also a medical oncologist, a good friend of Derek Haslam's, and Lincoln Nadold really um, produced this uh, incredible vision for how we can implement the science happening at Stanford into a healthcare delivery network like Intermountain Healthcare. And St. George happened to be a prime location because our medical oncologists were employed, their employment was modeled in a way that aligned their incentives for patient care and innovation. Nice. And, and it stuck, and we're here. Awesome. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to hear it. It's super yeah. cool to have you guys here doing this. So, yeah, thank and you. I appreciate all you do. So it's, it really is world changing. So, well, thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. And I uh, look forward to seeing where you guys go from here. Thank you. And that's a wrap, guys. As you can see, really amazing things happening here at Intermountain Healthcare with Precision Genomics. Uh, it's really something that we're super blessed to have here in Southern Utah. For more info on what's happening in Southern Utah, you can call me or text me 435-668-7293 or find me on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks, guys.